What are you looking at? Real tough guy. Can't even tell her you love her. Prey is a first-person shooter released in 2006, developed by Human Head Studios and 3D Realms, running on a heavily modified Doom 3 engine. Much like Duke Nukem Forever, Prey had a long and kind of messed up development history, but in the end it definitely delivered the goods. Prey's story is a surprisingly dark and morbid tale, involving an ancient invading alien race intent on enslaving Earth's population, ultimately to harvest humans for slave labour and as a food source. You play as a Native American named Tommy, living on a reservation with his grandfather and his girlfriend Jen. The game's opening gives you a bit of a look into how generally pissed off with life Tommy is, as well as showing off a really high level of interactivity with the environment, which carries on throughout the entire campaign. Before long, shit hits the fan and the place is attacked by a large alien spaceship, taking everyone into captivity in what may be one of the coolest opening sequences of all time. I don't know who thought to put Blue Oyster Cult's Don't Fear the Reaper to an alien abduction, but it works like a goddamn charm. After a convenient malfunction in the spaceship, Tommy is freed and sets off to rescue Jen from the aliens before he soon discovers their true intentions. Now, I don't want to really ruin the story as there's some really neat twists, so I'll just say that overall it's very well written, with some solid voice acting and an awesome cinematic soundtrack. It's also great to hear profanities used correctly for once. Oh, whoa, whoa, fucking hell! Yes! Let's see how you fuckers like it! Along the way, you'll get your hands on all manner of alien weaponry, which all function like shotguns, rocket launchers, etc. They look good, sound good, and they're great fun to use. The only weapon that's somewhat original is something called the Leech Gun, which you use to siphon energy from the alien ship, giving the gun different powers from freezing enemies into blocks of ice to firing off blasts of lightning. Early in the game, you unlock Tommy's spirit walking ability, a skill where you're able to leave your physical body in a spirit form, complete with badass spirit bow, and interact with certain elements in the game world that may have been previously inaccessible. Unlocking doors, opening force fields, and activating lists, for instance. These are often highlighted by a spirit guide named Talon, Tommy's childhood pet. And that's pretty much the gameplay in a nutshell. You go from level to level, turning into spirit form here and there, whilst you're shooting lots of bad guys. Obviously, you're going to die here and there, but Prey takes something of a different approach to death. Whenever you're killed by enemies, instead of reloading a save file or a checkpoint, it instead reverts back to the spirit form for a short while, where you're essentially sent to somewhere that is limbo. You've got maybe 10 or so seconds to shoot as many enemies as you can during this time, in a means to refill your health bar, before the game throws you right back into the action. In all honesty, I'm not the biggest fan of this gimmick. Sure, it's nice that you don't have to sit through a loading screen, but considering that you're most likely mashing the quick save button every 5 seconds anyway, it's often much easier and faster to do just that. Most of the time the game puts you right back in the exact same spot you were before you died, quite often with enemies in waiting. It would have been nice if they gave you temporary invulnerability or increased damage for a few seconds when you came back, but ultimately it's just more of a detriment than anything else. There's a reason why no one has copied this mechanic ever since Prey was released because it sucks. Prey's real standout, however, is the level design. Throughout the game, you're frequently able to either defy gravity or modify it. Certain walkways enable you to literally walk up them, upside down or sideways around bends and over ledges. Electric pads in other areas can be shot to change the center of gravity entirely, causing the entire room to shift and spin as it realigns, and it looks cool as shit. These types of moments are frequent in the campaign and are really well designed. It's great fun to be in a gunfight with aliens on one of the walkways, for instance, and watch them succumb to gravity when they're killed, tumbling downwards. Along with this, the game also uses portals heavily in the layouts, walk in one end, come out another. Most often these are summoned by enemies, but also found throughout the ship in other forms, and are used to progress through certain areas. Considering the game is essentially a corridor shooter, these moments give the game a much needed breath of fresh air. Later in the game, you're also able to pilot a hovercraft and progress through some truly humongous environments. These are really impressive from a technical standpoint, especially considering the limited size and scope of some of the levels seen in Doom 3. And it really makes Prey something of a standout in the genre, as it's got such a great mix of the old and the new. Yeah, it can be pretty brutal at times, with certain enemies being able to kill you in one hit, but this is mostly just a matter of being aware of the warning signs for these attacks and simply avoiding them. I didn't know anyone who played Prey when it was originally released, and I think the reason it didn't cause that much of a splash was that it was decidedly old school, released at a time when old school shoes were pretty much in the weeds. 
Not that this means you shouldn't play it, in fact I can't think of any good reason to not recommend it, especially considering how polished the overall experience is. There's been a sequel in the works for years now which seems to be in development hell at the moment, but in the meantime, if you haven't played Prey, it really is worth checking out if you're after a dark, mature themed story with some solid shooting and creative level design.